Somebody at some point tried to fix it with this little thin sheet metal and that clearly did not work. I also own a farm. Here we go. You are now watching the 2024 season of Farming with Duffy Ag. Welcome back to the channel. As you see, we actually got snow. So yesterday, I didn't even film anything. Got chores done, worked in the house. We had like 40 mile an hour winds, blowing snow around. 10 miles north of us up in Canajahari, up that way, no snow at all. So we got hit with a pocket of snow. But up there, like Ethan, he didn't have power for 20 plus hours, almost 28 hours. There's a lot of people that ran generators for the last day, day and a half. So we got lucky, we did not lose power, but we did get snow. It is all melting now. It's supposed to be high of like 46 today. And then uh, moving forward, we're supposed to stay up in the 40s, 50s. So maybe spring will come after all. So this snow is melting, but we had three inches of snow yesterday about midday and the wind just ripped through. As far as this truck, some people said, see, you put new batteries and it still doesn't work. It didn't need batteries. This side definitely needed batteries. That side had a, well, this, this side had a drain, no matter what. Even disconnected, you could sit there and watch the voltage drop and drop and drop. So, needed batteries on this side for sure. That side probably could have got away with the other ones. Um, we got to figure out the charging a little bit more. Um, but at the same time, that had a drain as well. Um, it had two volts on the negative side when you went from negative to negative. So well, let's see exactly what we got. We're just going to start it up, let it warm up. That way we know we're in a good place. That truck, we got to finish up the bumper. It wasn't going to work with the door open yesterday. The wind was brutal. So we're going to finish the bumper and probably figure out what that coolant leak is. And then from there, we will be in a... We'll be in a good spot with that as far as that um it could use a front tire like i said and at some point we'll get some rears for it some nice rears but otherwise trucks are yes we have the white truck to do some work on um but trucks are in a good place um, so this has been sitting for two days Got it, old girl still goes. So this morning went, got haircut and a beard trim. It was long overdue, we were looking homeless. And then as I was talking to the barber, I'm like, well, now the winter's back, so now my face is gonna be cold, but hopefully that's not the case. This is how bad it got, so. That's your drain plug for your manure. It's drain out at the end of the day, it became an icicle. So water was pouring in previously and uh, froze on its way out. She's warmed up, looking good. Lights came out pretty good. But I still gotta throw a few more. Yeah, now it's not flammable any longer. Fla, fla no smoking. See, now we're good. Okay, the real project to finish up today. It's got, it's pretty bright out. Um, bumper, we got end inserts to do. Um, I got an idea for a hitch. We gotta grab one bolt. And then we gotta put bump, uh, license plates on. But Chad dropped off more hats this morning for orders. So they will be going out the door. I don't wanna to touch any of them. But there you go, Duffy Ag. It's a little darker, the leather. Um, he's messing around getting the right, right patches and right supplier for that. So yeah, DuffyAg.com. Car hearts are all ordered. It's been exactly one week out of the maximum of four weeks that I told you guys it would be. They're frozen to the ground. So our our light turned into a ice skating rink. But one week out of the maximum four weeks till uh, they're shipped out. So I'm hoping it's really just another week, but we will see. I'm gonna check in with him um, and see exactly where he's at on the time schedule because he's got shirts for me as well and stuff like that. So let me put those in the house before I make before I get them a mess. Okay, we got plates to put on. 
we got these end inserts to go in which we got to do just a little bit of grinding i told him don't worry you're close enough i'll tight is tight better than you know having to fill gaps we got to do that it's got to get a coat of paint on it just so it looks a li little bit better um but we need a way to pull this out because as we all know get stuck eventually especially in the silage truck and uh i was wrapping around that old one it wasn't working that well alex kerr sent me uh one picture and it had a great bracket right here um and i do have i do have half inch angle iron sitting here that we could build something out of it's already supported we got to do some brackets down so let me pull that out and throw it up here and we will see exactly um what we can make happen okay i've had this piece for a long time we slowly used it for stuff i had it from when we built the rails on this that's when i originally got it so let's draw out what we can do a little arts and crafts um Trying to think how big that hook is. Probably want three inch gap so that hook can go in or any other hook that we got. So probably gonna have to cut that right off. So here's what we got. Three inch hole. Well, that's gotta go over that way. Dang. Drew it out in sharp in uh, chalk. I thought I was in the middle, but clearly not. I better measure that. Okay, we are all done up there. I went ahead and cut these triangles out to place them right here. And then I was like, they're a little short. So got rid of those. And then we got this one right like that. So we will uh, get these welded in there a little bit longer. Yeah, it'll look good. There we go. So I'll weld that and we're gonna place it on there and weld it on there. Okay, there we have it. It is welded up, looking pretty good. Um, let me get this top cleaned up. We got the sides cleaned up and we gotta clean up where we're gonna put it there. Ready. We're done with that one, which is sweet. Welded that all on. It's got a few layers of welds even underneath. So we gotta put two license plates on. We got our actual license plate and then we got our Duffy Ag plates. That I'm still not sure whoever sent it. There was no note with it um, many, many years ago. So we got one on this. Do we have one on all the trucks now? I think there's there was either three or four that were sent with me. So hit me up if you're the one that sent them because it's on that truck. It's on this truck. And I believe the white truck has it on it. I believe. So put one on each side. Then, uh, well, we'll drill it and then we'll paint everything. That's still warm. That is amazing. There's a lot of heat that goes through that. Probably shouldn't put the battery on top, but let me drill it up. I gotta get some cutting oil. I know everybody always says, you gotta have cutting oil. That is what is in this. See, thread cutting oil. That's what's always in this. Okay, other side, and then we'll tap them all.
Miami, Florida. Yeah. Because I know so many people in Miami, Florida. It's because of the dang DOT numbers. They just keep sending you crap. Okay. We're done with tapping. I got a little ahead of myself, started painting, and then I was like, hey, I haven't put the ends in. So we're tapped, um, all the holes. Now we can go ahead, put the ends, and then we'll, the holes actually allow smoke to come back out as we're welding on it. That was kind of part of my thinking. So let me get, uh, we got two pieces and they're a little thicker. They do go in there, but we're just gonna grind down some of the parts so they slide in nicely, box both ends, call it good. A little spray paint action. I'm probably gonna run out of black paint, honestly. I already put well, what I had of one can and the other can's coming on, so we got it. That's like two coats. I'll probably let it dry a little bit, 10 minutes, and throw another one on and be good. I went out through one on the side of the trailer where it used to say flammable. But in the meantime, we do have the replacement lights for this. And we also have um, new connectors because the connectors look a little weird, which I didn't realize how much the connectors were. I got one. I don't know if this is the one I got. No, the other one's in the pickup still. So I went in, well, after my haircut, I was in town. Um, $14. The world we live in. Probably cost them 10 pennies. Maybe 10 pennies? What's the ankle bar on that, you wonder? Um, yeah. So, and I never knew who sent me those first lights. I don't think there was ever a note on it, Brian. So we were we were talking and Brian Brian Brock, who loaded my actually moved the disc for me, held them and then loaded them this spring and the silo blowers his, which reminds me before we cut any feed, which I don't know if we're gonna I'm probably gonna feed some of that silo out at some point, the grass silo, um, get it down and then we're gonna fill it completely so that it is 100% full. Um, we were talking and Brian goes, yeah, I sent you those uh, like two years ago. Might've been longer than that. And I was like, I, no, it was two years ago because we were doing this truck. He said they were on his shelf and he didn't need them any longer. They were spares. These are the ones to get. So uh, the cheapest place I can find them is Amazon. H6024. So if you got seven inch, which a lot of trucks are the seven inch rounds, um, swap them out to these and you will not be disappointed. Whichever ones I put in the White International that I got way back, very disappointed with them. They, uh, they're just not bright. Oh, they got different, so Phillips has different ones. Those are the options you can get. So, all right, and if you saw in the previous video, as I was backing out, I didn't have a headlight on the one side, which, um, yeah, the high beam or low beam on one side doesn't work. Let's, uh, let's get these uh, figured out. So usually you got your screws that hold them in, but this hood's a little rough and it, this truck has seen some things, 100%. My other trucks lived a much nicer life than this truck. So these are bolted right through, which mean, just means we gotta hold the backside there. And as you see, they don't look that great, which we actually have whole, hmm. Maybe we'll fix that right now. Let me see what I got for that. That's an M. Off of the Mac. Off of the hood, which is broken. I just had spares. We actually have the whole outlet of the... Let me see, before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, once the fiberglass gets a little beat up, that's the only way of doing it. Your hooks are like so... those. I think what we'll do is throw them together and I don't know, maybe.
We'll see how, much, how easily man, this moves. So here's what I'm thinking. I had these spare housings. I was, I was piecing stuff together and then I realized you can buy the whole housing with all the spring and everything. Um, this one's junk, which means stuff does corrode up on it and stuff like that. But at the same point, I don't wanna, I don't wanna take it all apart and be in a bigger issue. But let's see, does it move? This is how you go down a rabbit hole. Broken. That's cool. Well, we've already committed. Oh, that one moved. That one moved there, and there's one underneath. Okay, then that pops somewhat right out. Oh, that is ugly. I should have bought a whole insert. I wasn't even thinking about it. No, we can't make the truck too nice because if we do, it's going to fight us on everything. Uh, problem is, there's a lot of parts that you need the full. You need the rest of it for. Uh, the adjusters and stuff like that. I don't like it. I don't like going down a rabbit hole. Okay. Okay. Maybe this will work. We just gotta re-rivet those back on. And we're gonna rivet that back into the housing, hopefully. Remember how this comes apart. You got your spring on your one side and then this on the other side and some things and some stuff. Is that, oh. Is that spring hooked to itself? It might be. Of course, there's one odd size. Now I gotta figure out this spring that holds it all tight because if that isn't, if that's built right onto it, that ain't gonna help us because uh, the gloves are getting covered. Yeah, if that's built right onto it, then we're gonna have some issues because that one doesn't have it. And these are all riveted, these other ones. I'm thinking the spring is riveted. For some reason. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Trying to drill out old rivets through old plastic and I'm gonna order at least one. The other side looks good from the outside. Um, no point in putting nice headlights in to have them corrode out the back or something like that. So we gotta save the, we gotta save this piece, which is normal. And uh, I'll look them up, I forget what they were, but yeah. The only reason I have those is because I'm sending them back. By the time I ship them back what they're worth, you lose everything pretty much, so. I don't think we got a, Save this, but we will. Um, just ordered one off Rainey's trucks with shipping. They're like 120 bucks, but shipping, the only option was FedEx. And I hate, honestly, I hate FedEx. It's a lot better here than FedEx and Mass. FedEx and Mass was a joke. But, uh, yeah, so we got one coming. We're not going to see it till next week, it says, next Friday. But in the meantime, 
If we can do the other side, that side should be actually pretty good. The plug looks good. I was worried about that. That's why I ordered two plugs, which isn't the end of the world because we use those plugs on everything. So, old bulbs. I got two brand new of the old style bulbs, but no point in holding on to them. Not those ones because then we get suckered into keeping junk. We already got enough junk. We need less junk. Right? Yeah, that plug looks pretty damn good. Okay. And these are plug and play application, which is sweet. And then tuck that back in there. Um, where are these crooked fish? There we go. We're good. They weren't crooked. I was just confused. This only goes one way. You can't put it in the wrong way without being really far off. I don't even know what time it is. That's how I hope it was gonna go, but with the other side, we might as well get the right stuff. We're gonna spend more time messing around, not having the right stuff. But... So that's in. We'll just throw the cover back on. This assembly is in such better shape, so I'm glad I ordered only one. So if you take one, two, Three, that comes out, swap the uh, lenses themselves. Yeah, be good to go. That's all done, bumpers all mounted back up, everything is on there, I got the safety glasses on. So we're just waiting on the insert that we put in there. Then we got the other light, which, uh, yeah, we'll just put that off to the side. So technically we didn't need the $14 plug piece there, but this piece, we'll keep that for a rainy day. I'm sure we'll need it at some point. And I'm sitting here going already. So next thing, we gotta do the cooling on here. But I was talking to Andy there, and Andy was supposed to come for the farm show. We're gonna see him a few times this year, I know that. And he's like, how about the hood next? And I was like, actually, there's something I really should do next. And that's this floor. And it's been like this for like three years. You don't ever stand there, but if you didn't know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's how it looks so what we got to do is cut out like that's good up there that's getting a little weak there so i gotta get it all out of there well get the mat out of the way and then we will that's actually what this sheet of uh sheet metal i got it years ago that sheet right there that we've cut sections out of it and stuff like that. I got that years ago and that was what this that sheet was for. And I just never have got around to doing it. So figure as long as the sun's out. Pretty warm day. Well, warm. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Um, we'll get this done. Somebody at some point tried to fix it with this little thin sheet metal. And that clearly did not work. So we're going to cut back to here. And then there's a cross member here. So I'll probably cut out this section here, go back up and yeah, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be a lot better than this and yeah, all part of it. So when I talk about how that's a farm truck, this is really a farm truck. This is bread and butter farm truck life. If you own a dairy farm, or I guess most farms in general, you know what I'm talking about. But we got this rigged up. So my biggest concern was without having all that support that was coming here, these were a little uh, sketchy. So you can move some stuff. So what I'm doing is we're gonna reinforce, the, we're gonna weld that in <laughs> right like that. We got that back there. And then uh, we're gonna reinforce this just a little bit. And this is all spare stuff. I got that holding it. So that comes up and around like that. And what we're gonna do 
as we'll, uh, I believe that's metal there. We're just gonna weld that right across to give it some more life. So if this truck is in my life in five more years, I'll be very surprised. Um, I got it six years ago. I had to look it up, March 26. Bought it for $4,000, had a manure tank on it. Made all my money back the first year for sure. And then we did bushings in the rear, which costed some money. Um, nothing too crazy. It cost some more time. So it's a double frame with, I was just talking to Nate and uh, his dad. And I don't remember, I think they're 52s. 52s, 56s, or 58s. I know if you look at them and 20,000s up front, uh, 24 fives all around. So we did that. And then I'm trying to think what happened after that. Was it? I forget what order. Silage box was four years ago, I believe. Four or five years ago. Four years ago, I believe. Got that out of Ohio. Never mind. Five years ago, I bought it. I'm trying to think now. Maybe I'm off on my time. Because I bought the chop. The chopper showed up five years ago today. Sully so moved that out of Ohio, and I bought the silage box and the chopper at the same time. Different places in Ohio I flew up. So this came with a hool tank. I think it was a 2850 on it. It was it was blue. We had all sorts of stretch in, in between the cab and like the tank ended like here. So all this space was real estate. And it ran good. It did its thing. Um, let me see if I, I can show you a Mac PTO from the other side probably. So double frame, built the slide rails so that this can slide on and off in the tank. And we only did that once. And then the tank was tired. So box stayed on forever. Um, yeah, what else What else are we talking about? So upgraded little things over the time. We put a new floor in the box and then we went through and redid all the cross members of the chain. Um, so that's all good there. This is what I'm talking about on a Mac PTO. Right off the back, this big old unit right there, that is what a Mac PTO looks like. So that's what we, somebody did say, why don't you switch it from this truck to that other truck? I've asked myself that too, but if I get into it and then all of a sudden we got something issues or it's nice having this truck the way it is because maybe someday we will put a manure tank back on it. I'm just saying. Um, if one comes up cheap enough, like a nice, nice 4,000, maybe 4,200 on this truck would be good. So if that, if that happens, I want that ability. So we're just going to fab up some stuff here and keep this truck alive for a few more years. Um, yeah, the floor, I all, this floor has been like this for last four years, easily, longer than that, since I got it, but it started getting bad to the point where you stand. And Andy, when I was talking to him, he goes, I don't remember the floor being that bad. Oh, Andy, you saw the videos. So we're gonna just fab up that, fab up the other side, and then cut a piece of sheet metal out there and it will run. See, we gotta do something with this cross member. I didn't know about that really. So it will sit there and when you put the carpet back over the floor mat, you'll never know. But this will be a lot tighter. Granted, once we put sheet metal right there, it's gonna hold all that together. And then, yeah. Truck doesn't run in the winter because we're not chopping in the winter, so. But yeah, 4K for that. Hell, the drive shaft when we had a carrier bearing come apart and the drive shaft dropped down and ripped off all the air, all the air lines, all the hydraulic lines, all the hydraulic fluid was in the road. Um, the tow truck company didn't have a Milwaukee impact gun. They had some, they had a snap on impact gun and they couldn't get it off. Then the boss had to come out. So they pulled the hubs, um, finally got the truck home. Cost me like 900 bucks to go like three miles. Um, yeah, that was a bad day, but that was uh, $3,600 to get the drive shaft rebuilt. Granted, them guys, I forget where it is, right there in New Hampshire, over the line. Um, it's uh, two older gentlemen. I'll remember, I'll put it in here. They can build a drive shaft. So they went through the whole drive shaft, switched it out to much easier to use ends, and they balanced it all, and it was $3,600, which <sighs> I used my tax money that year on this truck. <laughs> Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, put a little bit of love into the truck every year and it'll keep going for another season and 
eventually it will it's an old Mac. They don't die. Could live up, it could end up in some other foreign country and probably live another 40 years. Okay, that bad boy is in there, and that's not going nowhere. So we're back into here, and I gotta grab a light in a minute. It's gonna well, it's not gonna get dark, but I don't even know. Is it 5:30? I love that it's not getting dark till later every day. So this right here has got a little bit of a wiggle. And if you know, if you watched the previous videos or you know, that is a bracket for the lift pump. And we didn't need it because we already had a lift pump in. So I'm thinking there's a metal bar that's underneath here that I can weld to. I'm thinking I can put that right in there and we weld it all together. And then that keeps that nice and we just cut it out. And we're, I'm not even going to weld any of this. We're going to drywall screw it. Well, self tappers, because once you put the floor mat, you don't even know. Plus, uh, I don't have anything that welds really thin, really good. So once we get all that up and everything is like self tapper there, self tapper here, there, bang, bang, boom, body, boom. We should be good to go. Right, guys? Even though they got a huge meal, I'm almost thinking about feeding some corn silage out just to keep them a little happier. I think they'd like it. Um, granted, we never did that elevator up, but I might I might do some, just a little bit. We gotta fix that one bearing anyways, but I'm curious because I think they could put some more weight on faster with some corn silage in, them, in their diet. I also wanna get them a cow brush, so it won't be anytime soon, but that was my plan to have an outside cow brush over there for them. De Laval cow brush. Best thing De Laval that's ever sold. It doesn't Every barn should have one if you're a dairy barn. If you're a beef barn, you should probably have one too. They even have them for the rhinos at some zoo. So if you didn't know that. But dollar for dollar, best thing De Laval has ever made is their cow brushes. Alrighty, let me throw that in there. I got it all figured out. So reinforced right there. There is a cross member section that I put back in here. So that's all tight. We're going to get a piece of cardboard and start cutting out what we need. Um, we want to go around the seat, though. Um, so it's going to go, like, here and then back over. This is all... Well, the seat's not bolted right there. I'll put the bolt back in. Well, I was going to take the seat right out, and then I said, I don't know if I want to have those battles. Um, yeah. We do have to cut those out which don't go with anything well here we have it the most precise drawing i could get of the floor it's uh yeah it looks pretty good get some hopefully it works it's gonna work either way we'll get it oh yeah canadian geese coming south bud and we got deer on the hill I don't know where Yank was. I was feeding him. Oh, no, he laid down for a minute. But he's loving the weather. It is getting a little chilly. I think it's going to be in the 30s or something tonight. Um, How good are we? Mm. we got to notch this out more. Everything else looks good because once we notch that out, it's going to slide up just a little bit. And then... uh. Yeah, that's, yeah, notch that a little bit will be pretty good right there. So where's my chalk? Shut the air compressor off, which I guess I didn't need to yet. Do, 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 do. Chalk. That way you can see it while you're burning things off. Now we'll give it a little bit of, know, probably more than that. Cause there's a base there yeah that looks good a little bit of uh what is it clouds over there and bob ross if you didn't know i took art and i in college it was like a, it was a it was a 300 level class it wasn't 400 but yeah that was a good time my actual one housemate he graduated with an art degree and he still, to this day, doesn't know how he did that. Just took a little bit off the middle there. I know the lighting in here isn't that great, but... I'm actually struggling. I've seen it 
special glasses on. Um, alrighty. So we're we're pretty good there. The thing that we're not good with is oh, that's gonna go like that. We got some movement to do. Um, the thing that we're not good with is. We got a little extra right here that needs to be gone and a little bit there because then that will sit down. We might have a little gap. We'll, we'll spray foam it. Did I leave my little? Yeah. So I'll take a little bit off of here, like that much, and then let's do a. Uh... And I'm not kidding about the spray foam part, actually. That stuff works. So this cab had a bad floor, or my other cab is, the floor is awesome, but it had a bad cab corner. This cab corner on this one is solid. So you win some, you lose some. Well, different cabs. Same general concept, but, so this is a U, RU model. Cab's offset, so that means you got this step indent, much like a, a CH. I don't know if they're actually the same part number or not as, as far as the CH cab there that bumps in, but yeah. The tag is somewhere on here. This door is not that great. Actually, I don't know where the tag is. Who knows where the tag is, but yeah. Everything else is pretty much the same. Hood's different and the cab sits off. So, a lot of concrete trucks, city deliveries, able to look right out the door and see what you're doing. Well, it's getting a little chilly out now. Um, today actually went pretty well. Other than if we had the headlight assembly, we'd be in a really good spot. We do have to figure out this coolant leak that's coming from somewhere here. Um, I'm honestly worried it's the gaskets that hold that in, which... Now that we know how to take that bread box, the after cooler out, it isn't the worst thing, but that is what I'm actually thinking is the problem. We're going to find out at some point, but here's where we're at. It is not the prettiest thing, but holy smokes is a lot better than it was. Um, that's just how that bracket goes. So... We got a floor again, which is a big plus, and our brake and gas are not going to randomly leave the chat or, yeah, bounce around, throw on things. I don't know if you guys, yeah, you guys can still see. Um, we got the other light going on over there. So, self-tappered it in. I am going to get some spray foam, and we're going to spray foam all the gaps just to close it up. Way better than welding on rotten metal or tough metal. So I went further past and we had to cut some extra places. And this is all cut out so that the seat can come out if it ever needs to. Um, granted, at some point we will repolster the seat or we'll find one because, well, OG Mac seat. And that is not an air ride seat. So Yanko doesn't have the blessing in this truck. Neither does anybody that rides with us. But we're going to have a good floor. I'm going to throw the floor mat in after we do that. So tomorrow morning, we'll grab that. Um, there's something else I needed. <sighs> spray foam. Actually, does Dollar, Dollar General have spray foam? Because I think I'm going to run there. I got to get some. I have zero drinks in my fridge. Um, drank the last Gatorade just now. We're drinking water. And yeah, I got to get some stuff for myself. The other day when I went to town and I said, oh, I got to get groceries. I got Yanko stuff and I got the Cavs stuff and I got supplies but i never got groceries for myself so we got a messy bench i gotta clean this up tomorrow i broke three drill bits which was really cool too um all small drill bits which they are what they are i'm really annoyed with that leak we got to figure it out i do see it's wet coming down so which honestly at that point it's four hose clamps a little bit out of the coolant hose clamp there and that whole pe you pop the top off you got the ones underneath so we got all the tools to take it off so if that is what it is we will get a gasket for that not not the end of the world just something we gotta we're working on it 
Or it could be down there and spraying up. I don't know, me. I don't know. We got to do some digging. But... All righty. I'm going to back this out. I'll let that floor mat sit. Tomorrow we'll get the spray foam. That way we're good. Or today we'll see what what they got. But I'm I'm rather pleased. It's uh no. This truck is not taking nearly the time or money or headaches as far as putting things back together, but we're it's a silage truck. I know people that don't run hoods on silage trucks that cabs are smashed in from bodies falling on them, stuff like that. It's part of it's part of silage trucking. But I'd like it a little bit better because I'm not always the one who ran it. Aaron ran it this year. Joe ran it this year. Joe forgot to put the air in the seat, so Joe will never run it again, he said. I don't know. We'll suck you into it, Joe. Um, yeah, it's a rough riding truck. It makes a man out of you. So, all righty. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Put the floor mat in. Uh, we got to get the dump cart off the 75. We got to get the plows on the 75. We got to order parts for the disc, and I'm figuring out what I want to do with the planter. We got the marker arms to put on. Um, but there's some other things in the works, so I got to figure out a hey, what are you doing over there? He's done done for the day. It is almost eight o'clock Yeah, so all right appreciate you guys and I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one If you made it this far, I'll just give you a heads up back the truck out High beams work They got to have it wired weird because high beams are on and low beams are on, and then when I clicked them off, they didn't work. So we got to do some wiring, figuring out on this. Shouldn't be too bad. This side, marker light does not work. Took the cover off to see what the bulbs were. Just ordered some LED amber bulbs for up top. Probably should get covers for those because, or maybe I'll ask somebody locally. They might have a set if they're switching their set out. But yeah, after that, we're done. We're not changing. We're not messing around. We got to fix the leaks and little stuff. But, alrighty, now we're done for the day. So we got some wiring to do. Or we just run it on high beams all the time. But granted, those on high beams are they're bright. So I'm not gonna be that guy. We need high beam, low beam. Yeah, that's part of the cab that came out. So, alrighty, we're done now. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one.